<laughs> well, an old thing. An old thing, I was going to say. Is, medieval. Is, 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 <laughs> is medieval. Um, well, it's the Merchants of Venice. Not the Merchant of Venice. The Merchants of Venice. Okay. Lessons from the Merchants of Venice was the name of, of an article we ran this week in Quality Digest. And you can see it right there. Uh, and it's written by Loish. I'm going to make sure I pronounce this properly. Loish Sadule and Giovanni Tassini. Sadule is with INSEED, which is an international business school. And Giovanni Tassini uh, is with, uh, let me make sure I get this right, is with McKinsey. It's a global management consulting and analytics firm. Well, the uh, the lessons from the Merchants of Venice. Well, I mean, you know, the tease here was that it was Shakespeare. Well, not really. They not used really. Shakespeare <laughs> in, the, in the title. It's really not very much about Shakespeare. Um, but it is a really good example of kind of looking back in history for some lessons that we can use today because the Merchants of Venice, the people that were obviously working in that time 500 and more years ago, were at the middle of a very complex uh, international you know, business organization. And they you know, were sending people out in the world to trade and coming back to, to Venice. And, and there's a lot of lessons to be learned from the way that they operate and the way that they employed their systems for maximum efficiency that we can kind of kind of learn from today. And there's actually three things that the authors uh, in the article kind of referred to, um, which I think are, are pretty important for, for, again, for considering maybe how, how you can use this stuff today. Um, and I want to kind of read through these because I think they're, they're, for, they're pretty important. The first was, was network economics. And by network economics, they really mean that they're kind of using the, the power of personal connections to make, make sure that their business is, is, is being done most efficiently. And, and really, these Venetian merchants used a lot of family members. I mean, you know, as a trust was a big part of this. So they'd use family members to be their agents and go out in the world and, and take their goods out to wherever they were going and make sure they got a good price for them and, and bring that, that back. Now, today, many organizations recruit kind of in a similar way uh, through personal connections, referrals, um, and, and there's some examples that they use from that. Now, the reason that works is that cultural and societal forces really help to make certain that that trust is repaid. In other words, you know, when you have an organization where people are, are know each other and they're referring others to bring them in, you kind of trust that they're going to do a good job in referring people that you know are going to do a good job for you. So you're kind of re relying a little bit on your on your personal connections to make sure that you get people who can do the job. The next one that they referred to was what they call contractual innovation. Um, there's something that, that the Venetians had in those days called the, I want to make sure I pronounce this right, the colleganza. I think that's how they pronounce it. Okay. Colleganza. And that was where the, the merchants that were there would provide the capital for the voyages, right? Uh, and then the agents would sell those goods in foreign markets and then they'd take that profit, the money they made on those sales, they reinvest it in other products that they'd bring back and they'd sell in the Venetian markets. And then everybody would split the profits accordingly based on whatever their, their initial investment was. So that worked really, really well. Um, now, companies like Alibaba are doing, today, are doing things kind of similar to that. They have uh, what the authors refer to as their Alipay system, which is a, a few years old now. Um, but it, it, it works similarly in terms of verification and validation of, of goods and payment and make sure that, that all that works and then the profits of against are split by those that are invested in the system. And the final one was what they call innovation in, uh, in coordination. That was really a big part of that was the government of Venice would actually buy the ships. Ships, of course, were then, were as they are now, a huge investment. The merchants really didn't have the money to afford those ships. But the government of Venice did. So the government of Venice would buy the ships, construct the ships, lease them out to the, the, the merchants themselves. The merchants then would go out and make their profit off of that. Um, the example they use uh, today is uh, China. The Chinese government, for instance, is really doing a lot, especially in Africa, to make sure that Chinese companies have a footprint and are able to invest. So they're, they're doing a lot of the, the kind of the groundwork there to make sure that that the, uh, the individual merchants in China can make their money in Africa. So, I mean, the lesson here is that history really gives you some good things to look forward to. If you look back, you can look forward to ways that, you know, things that worked in the past that can work in the future too. Uh, really good article. I mean, you know, we've had sure. some good stuff from Inseed, uh, and, and this is one that really kind of makes you think about it when you look back and read it about, about what worked then and what, what still works now. You know what they didn't have then though? What? The cloud. They did not have the cloud. They did not well, have, they had, they had the cloud. They had clouds. They had clouds, but they, they, didn't, they didn't have the cloud. The cloud, yeah. <laughs>